I never thought I'd be writing this, but here I am, sharing the story of how my sister Lisa, my own flesh and blood, took what was supposed to be equally ours and left me with almost nothing. If you had asked me a year ago if I thought Lisa would ever do something like this, I would have laughed. Sure, we never had the closest relationship, but I didn't think she'd stoop so low. Let me start from the beginning. Growing up, Lisa and I were always different. I was the quiet, responsible one, always following the rules, getting good grades, doing what was expected of me. Lisa, on the other hand, was the wild child, the one who could do no wrong in my parents' eyes. If she messed up, it was brushed off as just Lisa being Lisa if I even so much as stepped out of line. There were consequences. You know how some families have the golden child? That was Lisa. I never really resented her for it, not as much as I probably should have. Maybe I just accepted that that was the way things were. I figured as we grew up, things would even out. We'd become more like equals, and whatever sibling rivalry or tension we had would fade away. I was wrong. Our parents were never rich, but they worked hard and managed to leave behind a decent inheritance when they passed away earlier this year. They had always been open about their plans. The will was clear, everything was to be split 50-50 between Lisa and me. Simple, right? Or at least it should have been. But somehow, Lisa found a way to twist things in her favor. I'm still not entirely sure how she did it. All I know is that when it came time to execute the will, the majority of the inheritance, our parents' house, savings, everything, was transferred to her name. I was left with a fraction of what I was supposed to get. At first, I couldn't believe it. I thought there must have been some mistake. I went through all the paperwork over and over again, trying to figure out where things had gone wrong. I reached out to the lawyer handling the estate, but it didn't take long to realize that this wasn't a mistake. Lisa had been playing the long game. She was smarter about these things, more manipulative. While I was focused on grieving and dealing with the loss of our parents, she had been working behind the scenes, making sure everything would go her way. When I confronted her, I thought she'd at least feel some shame, some guilt. I expected her to deny it or try to justify what she did, but what I didn't expect was how cold she'd be about the whole thing. She didn't even try to sugarcoat it. I was closer to mom and dad, she said, as if that somehow made her more deserving of their money. I took care of them more than you did. You didn't need it as much as I did. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was like she had rewritten history in her head, convincing herself that she had been the perfect daughter while I had done nothing. Sure, I wasn't around as much in their last few years. I had my own life, a job that kept me busy, but it wasn't like I abandoned them. I visited regularly, called often, and made sure they were okay. But in Lisa's mind, that didn't count. She was the one who lived closer, who took on more of the day-to-day -day responsibilities, and apparently that gave her the right to take what wasn't hers. I was angry, of course. Angry and hurt in a way I can't really describe. It wasn't just about the money, it was about the betrayal, the realization that my own sister could do something like this to me. How do you even begin to process something like that? I tried to talk to her to make her see how wrong this was, but she wouldn't budge. To her, this was justified. She even had the audacity to tell me that I should be grateful for what little I got. Grateful. That word still makes me want to scream. After that, I wasn't sure what to do. Part of me wanted to cut her off completely, to walk away and never speak to her again. Another part of me wanted to fight, to get what was rightfully mine. I've looked into legal options and while I have a case, it's not going to be easy. Lisa covered her tracks well, and going to court would mean dragging the whole family through a long, ugly battle. Speaking of family, I've talked to a few relatives about the situation and the responses have been mixed, to say the least. Some think I should let it go, that family is more important than money. Others are more on my side but are too afraid to get involved. And then there are the ones who, for some reason, seem to think Lisa was in the right. Apparently because she was more involved in our parents' lives toward the end, she deserved the larger share. It's like they don't even care that this wasn't what our parents wanted. I feel like I'm standing at a crossroads, and no matter which path I choose, I'm going to lose something. If I let it go, I'll be giving up on what's rightfully mine. But if I fight, I risk tearing the family apart even more. And honestly, I'm exhausted. I've spent so much time thinking about this, trying to figure out what to do, and it's draining me. Some days I wake up ready to take legal action, and other days I just want to forget the whole thing and move on. What would you do if you were in my shoes? Would you fight, or would you let it go for the sake of keeping some kind of peace? I keep going back and forth, and I don't know what the right answer is anymore. One thing's for sure, though. Things between me and Lisa will never be the same. Update 2. After everything that happened with Lisa, I thought at least some of the family would understand how wrong this was. So naturally, I started confiding in a few relatives about the situation, hoping for some support. But I quickly realized that, when it comes to family, things are never that simple. I first reached out to my aunt, my mom's sister, because she's always been someone I could talk to. She listened carefully as I laid everything out, how Lisa had taken most of the inheritance and left me with almost nothing. I could see the shock in her face, but it was quickly replaced with hesitation. You know, Lisa was really involved in your parents' care towards the end, she finally said. She gave up a lot to be there for them. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Yes, Lisa was around more, but it's not like I wasn't present. I just didn't live as close. I made trips I checked in constantly, but somehow, because I wasn't physically there every single day, my contribution didn't seem to count. I tried explaining that this wasn't what our parents wanted, 
Their will was clear it was supposed to be 50-50, no exceptions, but my aunt just sighed and gave me this look, like I should just accept what happened and move on. You have to understand, Sarah. She probably felt like she deserved more because of how much she did for them. Deserved more? It wasn't about deserving, it was about what was right, but trying to make her see that felt like hitting a brick wall. I walked away from that conversation feeling more alone than ever. Unfortunately, my aunt wasn't the only one who seemed to be on Lisa's side. I talked to a few other family members, mostly distant cousins, and the reactions were the same. Everyone kept bringing up how Lisa was more involved. In our parents' final years, how she made sacrifices that I apparently didn't. It was as if they were rewriting history to fit this narrative that made Lisa the hero and me the one who didn't care enough. It stung. A lot. Not just because they were taking Lisa's side, but because it felt like they were erasing everything I had done. And worse, it seemed like no one wanted to get involved. The people who agreed with me, who actually thought what Lisa did was wrong, didn't want to say anything. They didn't want to stir the pot, didn't want to be in the middle of a family fight. So, there I was. Angry. Isolated. Watching as Lisa walked around acting like everything was fine. To make matters worse, Lisa started flaunting her new financial status. It wasn't enough that she had taken most of the inheritance. She had to rub it in my face, too. She bought a new car a luxury SUV that she never would have been able to afford before, and posted about it all over social media. Then came the new clothes, the vacations, the fancy dinners. Every time I opened Instagram or Facebook, there she was, living it up while I was left with scraps. It wasn't just the money. It was the public humiliation of it all. Lisa was parading her new wealth for everyone to see, and it felt like a slap in the face every single time. People noticed, of course. I had friends texting me, asking how Lisa could afford all these things when they knew our family wasn't that well off. And what was I supposed to say? Oh, she stole most of the inheritance? It was humiliating. Every day, the resentment grew. Our relationship, which was already strained, now felt completely broken. We weren't speaking anymore, except for the occasional passive-aggressive text, and even those were becoming less frequent. Part of me wanted to confront her again, to really lay into her about how hurt and angry I was, but another part of me felt like it wouldn't make a difference. Lisa didn't care. She had what she wanted. I started seriously considering legal action. I spoke with a lawyer who told me I had a case, but it wasn't going to be easy. Lisa had manipulated the situation so thoroughly that it would take a lot of time and money to untangle everything. It would mean dragging the family through a long, ugly court battle, one that would leave a permanent stain on all of our relationships. That's where I felt torn. Do I stand up for myself and fight for what's mine, even if it means causing even more damage to the family? Or do I let it go for the sake of keeping whatever fragile piece is left? I've always been someone who values family, who wants to keep things harmonious, but at what cost? Some days I wake up ready to go to war. Other days, I just want to let it go and forget the whole thing ever happened. But the longer I sit with this, the more drained I feel. It's like this weight on my chest that I can't shake off, no matter how hard I try. I don't even recognize myself anymore. I used to be someone who avoided conflict, someone who would rather find a solution that worked for everyone. Now, I'm constantly angry, bitter, and resentful. I wonder if it's even worth it. Should I fight for what's rightfully mine, or should I just walk away and preserve what little sanity I have left? I know if I let this go, it's going to eat away at me for a long time but fighting back feels like opening a door I won't be able to close. What would you do if you were in my position? Is standing up for yourself worth the risk of tearing your family apart? Or is there a point where you just have to let go, even if it means losing something you can never get back? Update 3. Just when I thought I was done with Lisa for good, she reached out to me, and not in the way I ever expected. It had been weeks since we'd spoken. After everything that happened, the betrayal, the flaunting of her newfound wealth, and the growing resentment, I was mentally preparing to cut ties with her completely. I figured if Lisa could live with what she'd done, so could I. But then, out of nowhere, she texted me. Hey, can we talk? At first, I ignored it. I wasn't in the mood to deal with her, and I wasn't sure what there was to talk about. She made her choices, and I had to live with the consequences. But then she sent another message, one that immediately made my stomach drop. I'm in trouble. Against my better judgment, I called her. I didn't know why I felt compelled to hear her out, but something in her tone made me curious. And furious. Turns out Lisa wasn't living the high life like her Instagram posts suggested. She had burned through most of the inheritance, making reckless purchases and bad investments. Her new car? Leased. The vacations? Paid for on credit. She admitted that she didn't have a financial plan, and now she was in serious debt, with creditors breathing down her neck. And now, in some twisted, surreal turn of events, she was asking me for help. The audacity of it all. Here was Lisa, the same person who manipulated her way into taking most of our parents' inheritance, now asking for my help because she had blown through the money she felt so entitled to. I couldn't believe it. It felt like some kind of cosmic joke. I let her talk, half out of shock and half, because I wanted to hear just how deep her mess went. She tried to downplay the situation at first, acting like it was a temporary setback, but it was obvious she was in over her head. She was scared, desperate even. And as she kept talking, I felt a mixture of emotions bubbling inside me. Anger, satisfaction, disbelief, and weirdly enough, a bit of pity. After everything she had done, how dare she ask for my help? It was like a slap in the face. 
Part of me felt this twisted sense of satisfaction, like karma had finally come for her. She had taken everything from me, and now she was the one losing it all. A small part of me felt vindicated, but as much as I hated her for what she'd done, another part of me couldn't shake the guilt. She was still my sister. We had grown up together, shared a childhood, even had moments where we were close, before money and favoritism poisoned everything. I couldn't help but think back to those times. I remembered when we were little, staying up late in our shared bedroom, whispering about our dreams and making promises to always be there for each other, no matter what. Before life got complicated, Lisa was the person I trusted the most. I had flashes of memories from those days, when things weren't so broken. That connection, despite everything, still lingered somewhere deep inside me. And now she was asking me for help. I didn't give her an answer on the call. I told her I needed time to think, and she sounded genuinely grateful for even considering it. After we hung up, I sat there completely torn. Should I help her? Could I even help her, knowing what she'd done? Or was this just another manipulation? A way to get something from me because she had no one else to turn to? I felt like I was right back in the middle of a moral tug of war. On one hand, I didn't owe her anything. Lisa made her choices, and now she had to deal with the consequences. Helping her felt like rewarding her for all the pain she caused. But on the other hand, it felt cruel to abandon her in a moment of true vulnerability. She was my sister. That bond, no matter how frayed, was hard to completely sever. I kept thinking about what she had said, how she felt lost, like she had no way out. The desperation in her voice reminded me that she wasn't this untouchable villain. She was human, flawed, and in over her head. She wasn't the perfect sister that everyone in the family seemed to think she was. She was just Lisa, reckless, impulsive, and at the end of the day, scared. Still, I couldn't help but wonder if this was another one of her ploys. Maybe she didn't learn anything from all of this. Maybe she just wanted a bailout so she could go back to living the life she wanted, with no regard for the damage she left behind. It was hard to know what to believe anymore. As much as I wanted to shut the door on this chapter of my life, something inside me couldn't let go completely. Was family really too important to abandon even after betrayal? Or was this just another trap? Another way for Lisa to get what she wanted without taking responsibility for her actions. I don't know what to do. Part of me feels like I should turn my back and let her deal with the mess she created. But another part of me can't shake the guilt, the feeling that if I don't help her, I'll regret it later. What would you do? Would you help someone who betrayed you, or is there a point where you just have to walk away, even if it's family? Right now, I'm leaning toward walking away, but I don't know if I'm strong enough to actually do it. Maybe there's still a part of me that hopes Lisa can change, even though she's given me every reason to believe otherwise. Update 4. I agreed to meet Lisa, but it took everything in me to go through with it. Part of me just wanted to cut her off and never look back, but something inside kept pulling me toward her. Maybe it was guilt, maybe it was curiosity, or maybe it was that stubborn hope that things could somehow be made right. Either way, I found myself sitting across from her at a small cafe, trying to keep my emotions in check. She looked tired, more tired than I'd ever seen her. Her usual confidence, almost arrogance, was missing, replaced by a kind of quiet desperation. It was a side of Lisa I wasn't used to seeing. Still, I wasn't about to let my guard down. We started with small talk, awkward and forced. She asked how I was doing, as if everything between us was normal. I kept it short, avoiding anything too personal. I wasn't here for pleasantries. I needed answers. After a few minutes of circling around the issue, I couldn't take it anymore. So why did you really take the inheritance, I asked. And don't give me the same excuse about being closer to mom and dad, we both know that's not the whole truth. Lisa looked down at her coffee, stirring it absentmindedly. For a moment, I thought she might not answer. But then she sighed, the weight of it heavy between us. I don't know, Sarah, she said. I guess, I thought I deserved it. I was there more at the end, you know? And I just, she paused, searching for the right words. I always felt like you didn't need it as much as I did. You've always had your life together and I haven't. So that hit a nerve. So because you felt inadequate, you decided to take what was meant for both of us, I asked. You didn't even give me a chance. You just took it, like I didn't matter. She flinched but didn't deny it. I didn't think about it that way at the time. I just, I don't know. I was scared. After mom and dad died, I felt like I had nothing left. And I panicked. I thought if I had the money, I could fix everything. But now, her voice broke. And she wiped her eyes quickly, as if embarrassed to be crying in front of me. Now I've messed everything up. I sat there, listening to her, trying to process everything. Her words didn't take away the hurt, but they did explain some of it. Lisa had always been the one who struggled more, financially, emotionally, and maybe in her own twisted way, she thought this was her chance to finally get ahead. But it didn't make it right. It didn't make the betrayal sting any less. Do you even realize what you did to me, I asked. You didn't just take the money. You broke my trust. You made me feel like I didn't matter. Like you were entitled to something that we were both supposed to share. And then you went and flaunted it like it was nothing. Do you know how humiliating that was for me? Lisa didn't say anything for a long time. She just sat there, staring at the table, tears silently falling down her cheeks. Finally, she looked up at me, her eyes red and puffy. I'm sorry, I really am. I know I screwed up, and I don't deserve your forgiveness. I didn't think about how much it would hurt you. I was so wrapped up in my own insecurities and guilt over mom and dad that I couldn't see past myself. But now I see it, and I'm so, so sorry. Her apology hung in the air between us, heavy and raw. I could feel the sincerity in her words, but I didn't know if it was enough. 
I had spent so much time feeling angry and betrayed that forgiveness seemed impossible. But at the same time, seeing her like this, broken, vulnerable, it stirred something in me. Compassion? Pity? I wasn't sure. I don't know if I can forgive you, I said finally. Not yet, anyway. This isn't something that can just be fixed with an apology. You took something from me that I can never get back. She nodded, her face full of regret. I understand. I don't expect you to forgive me right away. I just, I'm asking for another chance. Not to fix everything, but to at least try. I don't want to lose you, Sarah. You're the only family I have left. Her words hit me hard. She was right. We were all each other had left. Our parents were gone, and no matter how much anger or resentment I felt, Lisa was still my sister. But could I really move past what she had done? Could I trust her again, knowing how deeply she had hurt me? I didn't have an answer. I'll think about it, I said, standing up to leave. But don't expect things to go back to the way they were. This is going to take time, if it happens at all. Lisa nodded, wiping her tears as she stood up too. I understand. Thank you for even listening. I know I don't deserve it. As I walked away, I felt more conflicted than ever. Part of me wanted to believe that Lisa could change, that she was truly sorry for what she had done. But another part of me was still angry, still hurt. And I didn't know if I could ever fully let that go. When I got home, I felt drained. I sat down and thought about everything that had happened, replaying our conversation over and over in my mind. I wanted to forgive her, but the betrayal was still too fresh, too painful. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Should I give her another chance, or is it better to protect myself and walk away for good? This meeting has left me more confused than ever, and I honestly don't know where to go from here. What would you do in my position? Update 5. I spent days after that conversation with Lisa replaying everything in my head. There were moments I wanted to cut her off completely and never speak to her again. Other times, I felt a deep pull to help her, like I owed it to her, or to our shared history. But no matter how much I wanted things to go back to some semblance of normal, I knew that wasn't possible. Too much had happened. Too much trust had been broken. It wasn't an easy decision, but eventually I made one. I wasn't going to give Lisa money. After everything, I couldn't just hand over more of what she'd already taken from me. But I also wasn't ready to abandon her completely. She was still my sister. And no matter how angry I was, there was a part of me that wanted to believe she could change. I decided I would help her, but on my terms. When I told Lisa my decision, she seemed both relieved and a little disappointed. She had probably been hoping for a financial bailout, but that wasn't something I was willing to give. Instead, I offered to support her in other ways. I'd help her find financial counseling, point her in the right direction for getting her life back on track, but I wasn't going to be her crutch. I'll be here to support you, I told her, but you need to do the work. I can't save you from this, Lisa. You have to take responsibility for the mess you're in. At first, she seemed to take it well. She promised me she'd try, that she'd start taking control of her situation instead of relying on others to fix it for her. But I knew Lisa well enough to know that her words didn't always align with her actions. That's why I made one thing very clear. If she crossed me again, if she took advantage of my help or tried to manipulate me, I was done. No more second chances. I need boundaries this time, I told her firmly. If you hurt me again, that's it. I'll walk away, and I won't look back. She nodded, and for the first time in a long time, I saw something in her eyes that wasn't selfishness or manipulation. It was fear. Fear of losing me and of being truly alone. Maybe that fear would be enough to make her change. Maybe not. But either way, I had to protect myself this time. The days after our conversation were strange. I felt a mix of relief and unease, like I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I knew this wasn't a storybook ending. I wasn't naive enough to think everything would be fixed overnight, or maybe ever. But I had made my decision, and that gave me a sense of peace I hadn't felt in a while. I had taken control of the situation, set my boundaries, and now it was up to Lisa to respect them. As the weeks went by, Lisa started making small steps toward change. She found a financial advisor and began working on a budget. She stopped asking for handouts and started taking more accountability for her actions. There were moments when I doubted her sincerity, when old habits resurfaced. But for the most part, she seemed to be trying. Still, I kept my distance emotionally. I couldn't let myself get too close too quickly, not after everything that had happened. I'd offer her advice, listen when she needed to vent, but I didn't let her into my life the way I used to. I couldn't. Not yet, and maybe not ever. As for me, I had to focus on healing. The betrayal I felt from Lisa had cut deep, and those wounds didn't heal just because she said sorry. I had to work on forgiving her, not for her sake but for mine. Holding on to that anger, as justified as it felt, was only going to drag me down, and I couldn't let her mistakes define my happiness anymore. It's strange how family can do that, how the people who are supposed to love you the most can hurt you in ways no one else can. But at the same time, walking away from family isn't as simple as cutting off a toxic friend or ending a bad relationship. There's history, shared memories, and an unspoken bond that makes it almost impossible to let go completely. I think that's what kept me from abandoning Lisa altogether. No matter how much she hurt me, she was still my sister. But this time, I knew better than to let that bond dictate my boundaries. I wasn't going to be pulled into her chaos again. If she wanted a relationship with me, it was going to be on my terms. And if she couldn't respect that, then I was ready to walk away. For good. 
I don't feel entirely at peace with my decision. There's still a part of me that's unsure, that wonders if I'm setting myself up for more heartache down the line. But I also know I couldn't live with myself if I didn't at least try to give her another chance. Within limits. Maybe I'll regret it. Maybe I won't. Only time will tell. For now, I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm focusing on myself, on rebuilding my life in a way that doesn't revolve around Lisa's mistakes. I've learned that self-respect isn't about cutting people off at the first sign of trouble, but about knowing when enough is enough and setting firm boundaries when needed. I can care about my sister, but I can also care about myself. As I write this final update, I want to thank everyone who's followed along with my story, offered advice, and shared your own experiences. It's been comforting to know that I'm not alone in dealing with complicated family dynamics, and your words of wisdom have helped me more than you know. I'm not sure where things will go from here. I'm hopeful. But I'm also prepared for the possibility that Lisa won't change, and I'll have to make that difficult decision to walk away. But for now, I've made peace with my choice, and that's all I can really ask for.